Hello and welcome to another Watch Report video review. My name is James Stacy, and today I'll be your host as we take a look at the new Prometheus Manta Ray 1000 meter diver. Uh, Prometheus is a dive watch manufacturer, sport watch manufacturer from Portugal and uh, this is their newest kind of most hardcore diver. Pretty serious piece of kit, uh, big chunky case, really cool interchangeable bezel system uh, and I'm really quite excited to be able to show you um, a watch from this brand because we've uh, reviewed a few of their watches in the past. So let's take a look. So this is the Prometheus Manta Ray. This model is the 1H. Uh, the 1H de delineates the uh, white dial, the Arabic numerals, and the blue accents on the hands. Um, it comes in a black or an orange dial models as well. Uh, with the Prometheus Manta Ray you're getting a 44.5 millimeter stainless steel case. 15.8 millimeters tall, 52 and a half uh, millimeters long, so it is a fairly long uh, watch. 22 millimeter lugs, which house a fully solid stainless steel bracelet. You get a trick uh, bezel interchanging system, so we can actually swap it for this black bezel, which I'll show you uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, you get a sapphire crystal. It's flat, has an internal anti-reflective coating. The uh, watch is powered by an ETA 28242 automatic movement, so you get your date at 3 o'clock and about a 37, 38 hour power reserve. This example is keeping excellent time. Uh, 1000 meter water resistance, or 1001 as quoted on the watch, so that's uh, 3300 foot, uh, and you do get a helium escape valve if you're a saturation diver. Uh, the total weight of the watch with all of the links in the bracelet is an almost astounding 282 grams, which is 0 0.6 of a pound. Uh, so it's a very heavy, very, very heavy watch. Uh, now I have to remove nearly, or I have to remove five links from the bracelet to suit my 7.5 inch wrist. Uh, so it is a little bit lighter as tested, but even with the bracelet sized, um, it feels a little bit heavier than an unsized uh, bracelet mounted Halios Laguna. Uh, so this is a heavy watch. Uh, you're going to like it if you prefer a heavy watch. If you're not so sure, uh, you know, maybe try and find something of a similar weight and get it on your wrist. Along with the uh, with the 282 gram weight, uh, part of that's going to be this lovely bracelet, which is full hex key construction, solid stainless steel bracelet. You get a fold over push button clasp with a ratcheting extension, which I can show you in more detail in a moment. So the first thing to be of note is the case. Uh, it looks to be a fully proprietary case. I haven't seen a case like this on another uh, boutique brand diver. You get a crown at 4 o'clock. The crown itself is not does not screw into the case, which you'll see here. Just screws in against it. It actually looks like an air filter, which I rather like. The crown is very solid. And if you remove it here, you'll see the threading. It's very wide, very large, and very easy to use, and that makes the uh, crown action very simple. No problem at all. When you have it ready, easily one of the, the most simple to use crowns I've found on, uh, on any of these divers. Uh, the bezel is also very nice, uh, so not only is it fully interchangeable, but the action is excellent. It's very mechanical. It exhibits almost no play between the points. and it's very positive. It's easy to pick a point and then get to it. Uh, it's connected by uh, six of these little hex keys. These are 1.5 mill millimeter uh, screws used all around and uh, to accurately adjust the bracelet or the um, lugs you will need two keys such as you see here. It is a lovely detail, and I think it really makes the bracelet uh, stand out. Only time will tell how much uh, these are able to kind of fill up with crud, um, and if they have to be cleaned all that regularly, which you wouldn't see with maybe a standard screw set. What we'll do now is we'll just take a nice closer look at the bracelet itself. So along with the very nice quality bracelet that comes on the Manta Ray, uh, you also get this lovely clasp. It's a very simple clasp, uh, not a lot of decoration. You do get this nice engraving for Prometheus. But the, uh, the clasp itself, uh, the first button here actuates, 
as you can see a ratcheting extension this is kind of all the rage on um, dive watches in general as uh, you don't have kind of the flimsy twin fold out uh, class that you see on older style um, and it, this is actually pretty good to, let's say you want to have a buddy try on the watch his wrist a little bit bigger than yours or uh, your wrist kind of expands due to water retention uh, you can make sure you always have a nice fit otherwise you get this lovely milled stainless steel it's a great clasp really a lot of quality here it's very very solid the ratchet points exhibit very little play uh, the last watch I had that had the ratcheting system was the uh, Citizen Air Diver the PMX uh, 56 and it definitely didn't feel as solid as, uh, as this clasp does the mount points are nice thick spring bars so it should be plenty tough and really just a lovely design um, across the entire bracelet it sits into the watch with these uh, nicely styled solid end links which are connected um, it's like a shaft and cap so you have the one screw set uh, falls all the way through with a, a screw that uh, finishes off on the other side if we get in nice and close you'll see the finishing on the case It's actually very nice. And now what we'll do is we're going to charge up the loom and uh, we'll see how it glows in the dark. Okay, so here we have the manta ray. Um, I've hit it a few times at full power from my flash and uh, we'll shut off the last light here. What you'll see is it is actually fairly bright to begin. Um, the points aren't especially large, the hands are fairly thin. Uh, the big problem with the, uh, man the loom on the manta ray is that the longevity is very poor. Um, after a couple of hours it's almost useless except in complete darkness and uh, in my opinion we've come across so many of these indie divers that have done the loom correctly in that it's very bright and lasts for an excellent amount of time uh, they're all using the same compound so you have to come down to an assumption that it may be the amount of the uh, luminous material that, you, that they're using but ultimately this could be a lot better and I think this is the, really the only weak point on an otherwise excellent watch that will affect almost every user. If you're not going to care too much about the loom then that's fine but you should know that it's not especially bright and uh, it doesn't last very long at all. Uh, it's not going to compare uh, to what you'd see from uh, a Seiko diver or even many of the other, uh, many of the other uh, indie brands. So we're going to get the lights back on and I'm going to show you how to uh, change the bezel system. Okay, so here we have um, a macro shot of the bezel itself. Uh, as you can see, we have a 1.5 millimeter hex screw that fits in. There's a very, very important note to make here, as I ruined one of these screws uh, not realizing. These screws in the bezel are counter-threaded, meaning if you want to tighten them, you turn them left. And if you want to back them out, turn them right. And that's about all it takes, and you'll see the screws now extended. We'll do this to each one. Through the magic of video you don't have to watch in real time. Uh, so here you'll see I've removed the stainless bezel. This is what you're left with. It looks a lot like any other dive watch that has had its uh, bezel removed. This is the spring that actually causes the clicking. It's a circular spring with these little tabs that keeps the bezel from only going one way. Here we have this one. So this is the black one, it kind of has uh, like a UTS style ratcheting, or ratchet style interior. And uh, on this, again, counter threaded, so you'll need to back this off a little bit, really just until they protrude. And here we have the black bezel mostly fitted on, so there's a couple left, and be sure when you're tightening it, it's the reverse of what your brain wants to do. It's left. And we have one more left here to do. And there you go. So now you have the new bezel created or uh, fitted. Uh, doesn't have to be, you know, make sure not to keep them too tight. You have that great action back, and it has a kind of a new watch look to it, kind of a nice darker style. I think it goes well with the uh, white dial. So for watch report, this has been our review of the Prometheus Manta Ray. Uh, this sells for uh, 555 euros, uh, which right now I believe is about the $720 range. Uh, at that price point, we haven't seen a lot of watches like this. It's very heavy, very chunky, 
extra toolish. Definitely, I would say, could be used uh, for diving. Uh, a lot of nice features, nice build quality with the hex keys, the ratcheting extension, and uh, kind of a trick bezel change. Uh, with the possible exception of the loom, uh, which isn't very good at all. The weight of the watch or the height, which may bother those with smaller wrists or people who just don't prefer a heavier watch. Other than that, excellent timepiece, nicely made, uh, and keeps nice time. We'd like to thank uh, Prometheus for uh, sending us a loaner uh, of the new Manta Ray 1H. Thanks for watching.